Hello and welcome back to Movie Reviews 101 and today we're going to look at Love and Monsters, the 2020 movie directed by Michael Matthews who gave us another excellent movie, The Five Fingers for Marcellus, which is very, very highly rated for me. Um, it stars Maze Runner's Dylan O'Brien and Game of Thrones' Jessica Henwick along with icon Michael Rooker, Mary Poppins, y'all. And the story here well, it takes us to a world where a meteorite was going to destroy the Earth, but a nuclear bomb was set off to stop it, only for the fallout to turn everyday creatures into giant monsters, forcing humans into colonies underground. And here we meet Joel, who has been here since he was 16 years old. It is now seven years later, so it makes him 23. Maths. Good, good maths, yeah. Yeah, we'll say good maths. Guess maths. Anyway, he lives safely in a colony where he's sort of seen as the wimpy guy. He's a chef. He just, and everyone else is all partnered up and he's all alone. And he has radio contact with his uh, ex girlfriend, Amy, who is played by Henwick, who is on the other side of the land, like 85 odd miles away. And when the creatures start getting closer to the colony, he decides that it's about time he left and went in search for his ex-girlfriend. And along the way he meets some people who help guide him. And he has to figure out what it's like on the surface for the first time with all these new creatures. And the best way I can put this is it is like watching Fallout, the video game, meet Zombieland. And I think that's the best way I can describe this movie. So without any further ado, let's go to the free ups. Number one is the world creation and the creatures. Now it does look like an everyday world has been destroyed, but each creature is something you would naturally see like, on the ground, like a snail or an ant, but just giant. And I think the way that they're created to look terrifying is brilliant. Um, there's a toad as well. With, and the fact is they're just still in their normal environments just giant versions of them and the big point is that not everything is evil that's there like you have to figure out which ones are good and bad and i just think it's an amazing creation what we've got here and i really want to see more um the characters all feel very natural and the way that it's all brought together is how joel was slowly learning he meets um clyde and minnow who are two different people, an uh, older man and a young girl, who both have been through terrible experiences during this, but are still finding their way to be strong and guide someone new. And of course, the star of the show is Boy the Dog, who saves Joel from the first creature he meets and somehow becomes best friends. And you can see that the poor little dog has lost its owner, who is a woman of some sort. We don't know if we ever do meet the woman, all we know is but boy carries around a red dress uh, that helps him remember his owner and it's tragic to see how attached he is and how lonely he is in this world as well and that just plays into the heart and soul of this movie it just feels like a natural adventure these people just want to survive and are still unsure of what's safe and it it's all for pure reasons why they're doing it there's no real greed involved so there's the free ups. Now we're going to the free downs. I'll get a bit of a hard one here because I really enjoyed this movie, but as always, we're going to have to nitpick it. I will have to go with the final act is very rushed. Um, I won't go into too much details, but the fact that everything else felt really slowly built up and then we're just there and stuff happens and like that it's the end. And it's like, oh, okay, fair enough. Um, and this also leads to, which has seemed to be my complaint about a lot of these movies recently, I want more. <laughs> I'm a greedy. <laughs> I just want to see more from these movies. There's so much of the world I want to see in this one and there's no different here. And... I mentioned about the red dress. I would like to have seen if there was more about who the real owner of the red dress is. Maybe in the sequels, we don't know. Um, I feel like there's a, a reunion waiting to happen there. <laughs> 
but this has got to be one of the most entertaining movies of the year. I think it came out this year. In England it came out this year anyway. And it was just a joy to watch. It's like everyone's great to watch. The world's great. I could just want to see more. I just think it's something very nice. It would have been an amazing cinema movie. Um, I have to give this one a solid 5 out of 5. And that's perfect for me. I enjoy these type of movies. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this movie. And until next time, I'm going to leave you to enjoy your movies and just say goodbye.